Well, the federal budget landed yesterday after 4 p.m. Eastern time and Bay Street is still talking about it. We certainly saw one of the biggest headlines from this was the plan to raise capital gains taxes on businesses as well as individuals who have gains over 250000 The aim is to raise money from that area of the market and put it into housing to make it more affordable and to improve the lives of young people. Our next guest is warning, however, that this is a tax on risk-taking and supporting innovation. We've got in studio Bruce Croxon, co-founder of Round 13 Capital, somebody who knows what it takes to start a business. Kirk Simpson is the co-founder, CEO of Go Confirm, and the co-founder and former CEO of Wave HQ, which he sold to H&R Block in 2019 for over $500 million. Bruce, I'll start with you in studio. Your initial reaction to this? My initial reaction is disappointing, um, is, is one of disappointment. Um, it would be one thing if the country was on a tear innovation-wise and productivity-wise, but as you and I have talked about many times on this show, we are not on the right side of those particular statistics. The government's 40% bigger than it was a decade ago. It's a, it's a clear line in the sand really philosophically i would say about how you want to run a country do you want to do you want to incentivize risk takers try and get back on the right side of innovation and and productivity or do you want the government to handle it with a bigger budget to try and spread some wealth around by ta by taking incentive from people that are that are uh, already in a risky enough game quite frankly and i've seen this complaint by a lot of venture capitalists a lot of founders on twitter so i want to bring in kirk sampson who is one of those founders a serial entrepreneur who, even with that exit, as we mentioned, is um, starting another business and making a go of it there. Kirk, this capital gains increase, the inclusion, um, do, does that really change who you are, what you want to create in this country? Well, that's a good question, and, and thanks for having me on. Um, I, I think at its very core, we just need to think about the fact that anytime the government taxes at a higher level, it takes money out of the economy, whether or not that is for risky angel investments that now, you know, don't pay off with the same level as they did before, or whether or not it's, you know, what I'm quite frankly more concerned about is businesses that need to be investing in where the future is going. And now their tax rate goes up. And so more of those funds are going to go into government coffers versus investment in keeping up with the massive changes going on in the market, whether or not that be, you know, with AI or productivity enhancement tools or any of those kinds of things that we need to be investing in. Anytime we're pulling that out of those businesses and putting them into the government coffers rather than into innovation and driving at a faster rate is problematic. I want to be clear about what the possible consequences are, Bruce, because we have been hearing from founders, from investors such as yourself, that there could be a chilling effect. And it's not necessarily about what you're taking away from your current tax base, but possibly what you are disincentivizing in the future. Startups, businesses, founders coming home, you know, from, from the U.S. Listen, it, it, the, the reality of the, I'll, I'll just uh, focus on the tech sector. Yeah. For, you know, it's one I'm most familiar with, but I, I haven't seen too many startups that don't burn, you know, a fair amount of capital for uh, X number of years before reaching the dream. The harsh reality of, of those companies is very few of them make it over the precipice to be successful companies that employ lots of people. But along the way, they require, in order to achieve that dream, they require people to get behind them. They, they require risk capital to cover the losses that they're going to incur on, on the route to hopefully start them. And it's a, it's a very risky um, area to play. We've relied heavily on angel investing. And many times on this show, Amber, I've, I've also complimented the federal government about the SHRED program and how much money they've put into supporting funds and really trying to, and the, the recent AI announcement, you know, devil's in the details on, on the yeah. 2.5 billion. We can talk about that another time. But when you, when you fundamentally disincent, disincent an already risky area, where so many of our early stage companies like Kirk has had experience in starting rely on to fund 
um, we're not headed the right way. And again, as I said off the top, if the innovation was on a tear and the productivity was on a tear, it's one thing, but we're, we're slipping in, in the G7 and around the world in terms of those statistics. Not good timing. And, and Kirk, I wonder if you could speak to that as a founder on the ground floor who's experienced all levels of success. Um, what are those early stages like and how does this change potentially complicate that from a risk capital perspective? Well, certainly, you know, I think one of the advantages that I have, and quite frankly, Bruce goes back even farther than I do in the tech ecosystem, but we've seen massive changes in the ecosystem over the last 10, 12, 14 years. And two things that I would highlight. One is that capital used to be really, really difficult to get in Canada. And we've made huge strides, more angel investors, more VC funds, all of those kinds of things. So anything that will have a dampening effect on that takes us backwards. And then the second thing, Amber, that you touched on, where we've seen massive gains, is in bringing people back from California to start businesses here and not losing businesses at the early stage moving down to California, as an example. And I worry that you know the more um, that we disincentivize, you know, risk capital here in Canada, entrepreneurs from being successful here in Canada, the more we're going to have issues with this brain drain. We have to acknowledge, though, the elephant in the room. I mean, even on this panel, I'm talking to Bruce. You're very successful. You had a successful exit with your original startup. You're a venture capitalist. Kirk Simpson with that exit of more than 500 million. And I know that not all of that went into your pockets. But uh, the argument is made that, you know, these are wealthy individuals that are being asked to pay their fair share for a generation, a younger generation, that can't afford the same sort of luxuries like housing, you know, their grocery bills or their education, and that we're really just asking a small, small percentage of the population to just help out that upcoming generation. Yeah, I, I sort of, uh, I mean, that's a multifaceted discussion. I, I sort of bristle when I hear the word, word fair, because we fundamentally don't have a fair tax system where you, you pay a higher proportion the, the more you make. It's actually the wealthiest people in the country are, are actually carrying way more than their fair, their fair share of the tax burden in the country. And listen, you can't run a country without, without tax. And you, know, you don't hear, uh, by and large, entrepreneurs up here complaining about Canada and the tax system, except for when you, you burden an already risky sector, a section of the economy, that we rely on as a country for future growth and innovation. And the stats are clearly showing we're not on top of it. So it's a really a common sense thing, more than uh, you know, people worried about a few extra dollars coming out of their pocket. As, as the impact of that is spread across the ecosystem, we're going to continue to decline, I mean, relatively is, speaking. But this is a conversation that's happening not just in this country, in, in Europe as well, in the U.S. And Kirk, I'd love to get your opinion on this. Asking some of these successful tech founders, yes, you suffered in the beginning, but now, you know, you had the payoff. Share the wealth. Help your community. I think it's such a great question and I'm glad that you're addressing it and taking it on because it, you know often it goes unsaid. And listen, I I totally agree with you that I think we live here because we believe in a fair country that supports those that are are not as fortunate as we are, that wants to lift everybody, etc. I I think that is fundamentally a Canadian value and vision for this country that I think we all hold. I think what's what what is the rub here is really what is the best way to get to a country that can accomplish that vision. And I think the concern right now is that the current vision is just to tax at a higher rate and that the government can spur innovation through these large grants for AI or these large investments in super clusters or whatever the buzzword is today. And I think what we're saying is that the best uh, capital allocators that should be incentivized to help drive innovation, which grows the economy, which makes the pie bigger, is to get entrepreneurs and Canadians to take their risk capital, invest it, drive growth, and that that will have the best impact. And I think that's really what we're arguing for. 
I should point out, of course, there are lifetime exemptions for gains that are under a certain amount, though some have pointed out, uh, Kirk, that this might exacerbate the Canadian condition in tech, which is companies selling early. Yeah, I, I, listen, that unto itself is a whole discussion, you know, as Bruce would say, that we could we could take on at a different time. But, but you know, the, the capital gains exemption is really, really helpful. But again, I think this is a more macro piece of what is the vision of the government in order to drive this country to further prosperity. And this on the back of all of these really disappointing numbers around productivity and, and the economy growth and all of those kinds of things. We're just worried that it's not going to lead to the outcome that we all want. A final point to you, Bruce, what's the ask from politicians, either from the current government, I know you've talked in the past about Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives, um, well, you know, Pierre, my I don't first, know. My I first request would be, Pierre, answer my texts because we want to hear from you on this show about, you know, whether where, where you stand in terms of supporting small business and, and, and entrepreneurs and, and, and investors. But listen, my ask is the one thing we all love about this country is it, it is a fundamentally a democracy, right, where voices are heard. We had this issue come up in 2017. BNN was incredibly supportive of giving me a platform and a time to give at least a counter to the proposed tax hikes at the time on, on capital gains, on holding companies, the lifeblood of sort of angel investing. And we were successful in being heard. And we came up with an alternate alternative tax plans. And we it was a very productive exchange with the government. And uh, my ask would be simply keep an open mind, hear our arguments. There are, are different ways to skin a cat if you need to raise money. I, I noticed a few things about reducing the size of government actually in the budget. I think you're on the right track there. Mm -hmm. um, but let's try and do this together without taking the incentive away from risk takers, which is the thing we really need given the way that innovation is trending in this country right now.